Hi people, me again of course, more no Ravenberg as always under as usual. Yeah, I'm briefly going to be covering another Goetic Spirit. It's going to be Goetic Spirit number 19. Salos. The 19th spirit is Salos or Saleos. He is a great and mighty duke and appeared in the form of a gallant soldier riding on a horse crocodile with a ducal crown on his head, but peaceably. He caused the love of women to men and of men to women and governed the three legions of spirits as seal as this, etc. So yeah, let's dive right in. Um, let's start with the attributes first. Salos is uh, Saturnian. He corresponds to the zodiac sign Capricorn and has a considerable Plutonian influence, although negative. Negative meaning it's um, more of a coercive or forceful nature. Now let me explain. Um, after doing my research and everything, I found out that Salos is a demonized pagan god. And he stems from Roman times, but not the Rome that we all know as the, the ancient superpower that conquered much of the known world back in the day. Now, this was in the early days of Rome, when Rome was still a, relatively speaking, small client state. So essentially in the beginning days of Rome. And how it started is that he, um, he was a thought form created by by Roman priests, pagan priests back then, and um, they, back then they had like um, gods that were um, the Roman version of Greek gods, so uh, Zeus turned into Jupiter, uh, Ares or A Ares turned into uh, Mars, and it just goes on like that, and they specifically wanted an entity that can do what he specializes in which I'm about to discuss which is what I'm about to discuss and that's how they he came into being they simply created him like that um, because they looked towards their God and they had no God that could specifically do what they wanted to and they thought it was a bit metaphorically tacky and or impractical just unnecessary within the scope of things to consult their own so they simply through sheer force willed him into existence now as for his specialties uh, Salos specializes in specifically uh, coercive deeds, essentially getting people to essentially like you or favor you or make it so that people adhere to your wishes. And that's exactly where the uh, thing comes from, the description. The section specifically, he calls it the love of women to men and of men to women. So that's only in part true. That's only true in part. You can use it like that to get to attain someone's love or you can work with Salos in order to obtain the love of someone uh, and whatnot. Um, if you have your sights set on a target, etc. But it's not just for that. That's purely one directional. Okay, it's uh, more broader in scope or scope wise. So anything that you want, essentially you want to gain ad you want to gain admonishment or uh, favor from people in any way shape and or form you want someone to like you or revere you that's also what Salos covers um, and specifically Salos will go to work in a coercive manner essentially forcing the person to take a liking to you and that's what it's um, that's pretty much how things work and that's what Salos specializes in um, in terms of appearance Salos appears as a uh, black um, a black uh, humanoid figure and he showcases the description in the Goetia of the soldier riding a crocodile with a crown as well I do briefly need to look up what um, what was it again um, a ducal crown I need to briefly look up what a ducal crown is because I did see a crown that looked unorthodox but yeah okay yeah now that's the crown I saw yeah ducal crown is just the basic royal crown that that you come across with um, thing royalty, especially in ancient times like medieval times and, and further back, uh, t further back history wise. Yeah, that's what the crown looked like. Um, and yeah, what else can I say? Um, that uh, appearance is purely for show because that's simply an incorrect appearance, honestly. Just like a good deal of spirits in the Goetia, uh, the same context applies to um, Salos in the sense that he is. Um, the whole uh, appearance mentioned in the Goetia is purely fictional. The writer and or editor of the Goetia or the person that um, 
that is responsible for the information that you see in the GoHS simply um, added that as a means of wowing anyone that um, that is prone to being wowed which is a lot of people obviously and yeah that's in any case what Salos can factually do for you and how he operates and everything and um, Another thing I also notice, but again, the aforementioned appearance, like I said, is his original appearance, a uh, black humanoid figure, but the blackness is interrupted sometimes by transparency, in a manner of speaking, interrupted. Um, let me see, what else was I going to say? Um, I also saw, for example, that Salos displayed forms of femininity on occasion. I mean, the male part is still dominant, but... On occasion, he displayed femininity, and the reason for that I I uh, uncovered is that um, he was also uh, utilized by a considerable amount of women that wanted what he specializes in and what he offers. And this makes sense. I mean, when you think about it back then in ancient times, like BC times and whatnot, um, and early AD times, uh, women back then obviously had very little to say in society and whatnot, and or they really if they wanted to climb up the ladder the social ladder or they wanted to gain favor from from mainly a man that is in a position of power and influence then yeah you know look no further in a manner of speaking than salos um the estimate is that 65 percent of people that utilized or have utilized salos services or saleos services throughout time were male and 35 percent are female but 35 percent is still a whole lot, I mean, compared to the average uh, entity. Not that I have any statistical data regarding numbers gender-wise, but still, 35% from a neutral perspective is still quite good, honestly. And that's why I know that, because I noticed that. I was like, hey, he's showing, on occasion, he's showing, like, traits of femininity. Uh, let me see if I forgot anything else. Uh, no, that is all. Goodbye.